And that's why he gets drilled here and he slams the bat. Now he's making a move and here come, here he comes on the run. And now fisticuffs as Kelly's being tackled and punches being thrown. The dugout's empty. Here come the bullpens again. And this time it's for real. Unlike the last time, punches and tackles. And we're going to see some ejections after this one. And the Red Sox and Yankees are at it again. Austin getting drilled. And Kelly just about undressed. Well, very clear that that was in response. Miguel Cabrera was actually super animated about, hey, you have to protect your teammates when Michael Fulmer retaliated. Wait a him. minute, here we go. Oh, here we go at home. Robine and Cabrera get into it. Punches thrown. Robine getting into the gut of Cabrera. And now both benches are cleared as Robine and Cabrera at the bottom of a pile. And both teams storming for them at home plate. Clint Frazier is holding back Gary Sanchez trying to get in on it. And Cabrera is still down. This is not your ordinary best. So there was some severe punching in there. Usually it's a lot of pushing and shoving. But some, they got some good shots in. Sweet time. Oh, he got some chippiness. He's talking to Lindor. Oh, now it's on. Everybody's out on the field. Stanton answering back to Lindor. Umpires and coaches are doing their best to defuse the situation. Here come the bullpens. Oh, boy. Okay. Practice. There we go. There we go. So that's it. David Phelps is now going to be thrown out. And dugouts emptying. The guys in the bullpen jogging in. And David Phelps and some of the Yankees are walking right toward the Tampa Bay players that are coming out. Sean Rodriguez. Rodriguez fired up. Well, you could smell that coming. The frustration boiling over. Both sides warned. You know, I just asked Al in between innings, too, if a pitcher feels a responsibility that he's got to take care of this on his own. And there's a push punt to third. They go to second, they'll get the force. And Wade reaches on the fielder's choice. And there's a little talk in there between Hope and Austin. And the benches will empty. I'll tell you what, every once in a while on a cold night, when you're just sitting on the bench and you got to run out there, a little stiff. You gotta get up and stretch where you go out there. Now the guys from the bullpen do the obligatory jog in. And Marcus Timms keeping a hand on on Austin. Well, you see the replay. I mean, he did come across the bag, but this is what you're taught to do. You slide in hard, but, you know, this day and age, there's the tapper to third base. The contact play was on, so they have Torrey in a rundown, and he is tagged out as he gets to the plate. Oh, and Torrey just pushed Pudge Rodriguez in the back, and here we go. Both benches have emptied. I don't know what Pudge might have done or said to Torrey Hunter, 
but Torrey Hunter went right after Pudge. I think Pudge gave Torrey a little shot after tagging him out. And now here come the bullpens, although things have calmed down pretty well around home plate. We, we know Torrey Hunter well enough that he's not going to cheap shot anybody, but he must have felt he took one. Well, it's a situation where Torrey's going in there. It's going to be a routine play at the plate. You're not going to just give up on it out there. You're going to try to move him out of the way and allow the base runners to get the first and third. It was a minor collision at best. Look out. And that got Donaldson. Look out. And that got Donaldson. Chase Headley looked out to Jay Happ as if to say, hey, I didn't throw it at Donaldson. Legs of Chase Headley. Watch his like reaction. Went behind him. And now he got hit. From a Blue Jay standpoint, I don't understand, understand why. I mean, really makes no sense. None whatsoever. Especially for the Blue Jays, a team that's trying to have a playoff spot. This is moments ago on tape, so perhaps he was ejected. Yep. There it is. There you go. Now we'll get thrown out. Now we're going to have some action. Donaldson and Sabathia trying to get at each other. This is the last time these two teams play this season. The two catchers are trying to keep uh, Sanchez back away from Russell Martin, who's trying to work his way around the pack. All right, Rothschild is getting heated now. He gets thrown out. Yankees aren't going to have any coaches left. See, that's somebody. Here comes Tony Pena. And this is just the second inning. Lloyd responded. <laughs> Whoa. And, of course, Rich Amaral stole second, third. The Mariners all still walking toward the Mariner dugout there. John Zimmer. Of course, Paul O'Neill played for Lou Pinella at Cincinnati, and there might be some uh, hard feelings that remain. Now, we might have round two. Darryl Strawberry up against the fence. Here we go. Strawberry is being pinned by Mejias, and the Mariners getting some shots in against him. Chris Basio. Mulholland's there again. Well, Strawberry is one of the hitters that saw one inside. They got to get Mariano Rivera. You, didn't, you don't want him in there at all. Paul O'Neill. So he responds in kind. <laughs> wow, and uh, Paul is looking for well, see now. That pitch would not have come close to hitting him. And uh, Paul O'Neill is appealing to Rocky Rowe. See, he thinks, and, and Joe Torre referred to this before the game. Oh, a fight! Oh. Here they go. O'Neill tackling Marzano. And now both dugouts empty. Well, our director, Bill Webb, said this might occur. And here it is. I think O'Neill wanted the umpire to issue the warning. It was not forthcoming, and then he and Marzano got into it. Joe Torre right in the thick of things. Big Cecil's out there, and Terry Mulholland. And Joe Torre with a hand on one another. Yeah, a lot of times those starting pitchers out of the ball game, they're in the clubhouse, not Terry Mulhall, and he's there to protect his teammates. Oh, that's going to call. Yeah, he's gone. Pitches are going to empty. That was a frustration pitch on beneath his point. No need for it. Darryl Strawberry is after him now. That was a real cheap shot. Umpires trying to restore a little order. I thought Tino might step out because the crowd wanted a curtain call from Bernie. And Benitez, because of all the frustration. Oh, oh great boy. They're after him. This is getting ugly now. Now somebody's, you got to break it up. Somebody's going to get hurt. Man, you don't throw with Tito Martinez, so the Yankees have shown that before. Ellie Hendricks trying to calm Joe Girardi down. It was Graham Lloyd who broke through the pack. 
Warm it up again, folks. That's Tito. You can see that the wiser heads ripped in trying to calm things down, but Tino, I rate, and I don't blame him. Me neither. I mean, there's one thing about making a hitter move his feet, but when you just blatantly bury one in his back after the guy well, before you hit a home run, that's a real cheap shot. I mean, Bernie just went around the bases, didn't show anybody up, and the guy... To me, when a pitcher does that, it's showing that he has no confidence that he can get people out. I know he's frustrated he gave up the home run. But this is just going to lead to something else in this series, and maybe right now. Somebody's going to get it for the Orioles probably tomorrow. Now, all of the umpires, as this spills into the dugout, this is horrible. The umpires now are standing out by the foul line because they can't do anything about it. They're just... In the dugout, that's where the action is right now. Well, they've got to get some of the veterans in there and break this up. Like Eddie Murray's trying to break things up on this side, but right here, right there, and they're holding Tino back. He wants in the pile. Right think, down there. I think Tino is signaling that that might not have been the first time Benitez has done that. Murray and Strawberry right there. Charlton in the middle of it. That's an ugly scene. And the umpires, you know, did what they could to try to prevent it. They don't want to get in the middle of it and get hammered by an uppercut. So they're just idly standing near the foul line. Joe Torrey right now trying to keep Darrell Strawberry calm. You know, when a pitcher hits somebody, after he get, he, he didn't, Tito didn't throw that pitch that was hit for the home right. run. It, it, it's Benitez is fault. It's the fourth home run he's given up in under 18 innings. Ted Hendrick. Yes. Benitez is gone. He's, he's chasing somebody. You see Drew Corbel. Let's get out on the field and play ball. He immediately. One for three. And that's thrown behind Posada. And if you wonder, is that an answer for Aaron Hill? And now you can see Posada is thinking that that's the case as well. And both benches are empty. I think that's obvious, Michael, that Major League pitchers are, are pretty good with their command. They, they'll miss a little bit, but to throw behind somebody, uh, that was a message. I, I believe they thought that they hit Aaron Hill. The Yankees did on purpose. Both benches warned. This is just square in the back. I, I don't, unless there's some other kind of history or something that in the series up in Toronto, this game didn't dictate from the Lancet to hit him on purpose. Now, this is just, yeah. It's not even close. I mean, Carlson has been locked in the four batters that he has faced. By drive, they face it down the right field line. Posada will score. Cano goes to third. Gordon's at second with an RBI double. And it's now 9-3 Toronto. And Posada had something to say to Carlson. And now they're going to come together. And now they're going at it. Both benches clear. Shelly Duncan right in the middle. So is Joe Girardi as they're trying to pull all the players apart. And a couple of the Yankees make sure that Posada is down the runway.